Hey guys, whoa, uh, we're live. Welcome to a Star Wars themed <laughs> ukuleles. That wasn't a very good intro. Put it away, Tim. Let's get started. This morning, we are going to be looking at a rather unusual ukulele song on adventurous ukuleles. It's going to be the Imperial March from Star Wars. So make sure you've got a ukulele handy. If you've got any Star Wars themed uh, costumes, then that also works. Uh, lightsabers are optional. Ukuleles are not. Before we go any further, let's have a listen to how it's going to sound, in theory. This is an unusual one because um, I'm not singing. This is an instrumental one, and uh, it needs a melody part and a rhythm part. So it's very hard for me to play on my own. So we're going to try. Here's one. I made earlier. Okay, and we're back. Now, I have no way of knowing if that actually just worked. So let me know in the chat if uh, that, if you couldn't hear anything or whether that was a complete disaster. Uh, I tried to make that video uh, earlier in the week so I could show you how I wanted this to sound. I've been meaning to do this for years, so it's about time I got around to it. Um, I can't see any cries for help in the chat, so I'll assume that that's worked okay. So, we uh, are going to need to learn a few unusual chords for this one. Actually, they're not that unusual, but they're very unusual to use together. We're also going to look at some fast triplet strumming for the intro. Uh, and, but then the strumming for the main part of the song is actually not too bad. And we're also going to look at the melody line, the individual notes. So, check your ukuleles are in tune. You should have a G, C, E... A. I'm not going to spend too long on that because you are adventurous. You should be knowing how to tune your ukuleles. Check it sounds in tune with a chord or two. Uh, okay, good. So it looks like it worked on the chat. So ukuleles are in tune. You're holding them correctly. Uh, now let's uh, have a look at the chords we are going to need for this piece of music. What I shall do is minimize that and then yeah we can uh, so I'm just working out this new setup here so <clears throat> this isn't what you've got on your sheet so do go to the link in the video description and download the music for this I've got a um, full score uh, for ukulele one, which is the melody part, and I 
I've also got a full score for ukulele 2, which is the chord part. And I've also got a single sheet that has the chords and the melody part and then a summary of the chord order on as well. So I've got that sheet in front of me, but on your screen you'll see uh, you'll see a close-up of my left hand, which may or may not be useful, because if I'm playing up here it might not be on the screen, I'll try and keep it on the screen. Now you've also got on the right, you've got some chords. Um, there's actually only four different chords we're using this song, and, only, and one of them only comes in for half a bar. So there's only three chords. Uh, they're all minor. And uh, then at the bottom of your screen, you should see a, um, a score for the rhythm part at the moment. So first of all, let's have a look at the chords. The main chords that we need are all minor, and they are all unrelated to each other. First of all, we need an E minor. Should be familiar to most of you. There are lots of ways of playing an E minor, of course. You can play it there with an open G. We can play it there as a bar chord or a four-fingered chord. That means it's using this D minor shape that we know. There's our D minor it's slid up by two frets. We've also got E minor sevens, which we use quite a lot in pop and folk songs. They're not suitable for this piece though, so no E minor sevens, please. And we've also got an E minor all the way up here. This is on the seventh fret. Um, you can play it three fingers in a row leaving the G here open and all the other three fingers are on the seventh fret or as I would tend to do it, it's a bit quicker just use your first finger and do a bar squeeze down across all three of the strings three strings nearest the floor and that gives us an E minor chord um, why don't we just play it normally Tim? well we can just play it normally but the nice thing about this piece is if I play the E minor that way both the other two chords that I'm going to use are played in an identical way we also need a C minor, which is the same shape, but on fret 3. You can hear the song already, and those two chords, they're so rarely used together, they do not share a key at all. Uh, and then the other chord we need is actually a B flat minor, but if we play it in the same way, we actually get a B flat minor 6. Ooh, it's a, such a good chord. A little bit harder work doing a bar down here nearest the nut because the nut is holding the strings away from the fretboard. You're going to have to squeeze quite hard there. If you need to stack up a finger on top of each other, that's okay. But if you can do it with just one, even better. It's even quicker. So we've got those three chords. E minor, C minor, and B flat minor. Actually a B flat minor 6. Those are the chords we need for this piece. There is half a bar of a C major just popping in there but we can actually play C major very close to the E minor just by using only the seventh fret on the string nearest the floor so that's the one I've written onto the chord sheet so both the E minor and the seventh fret and the C and the seventh fret are the ones I would suggest you use for most of this piece for the intro and for the opening part of the strumming the E minor down here might be easier might be easier. Test it out. Uh, we need to change quickly between an E minor and a C minor. When I'm doing it really quickly I prefer doing a sort of uh, half bar for the E minor. So I'm actually barring the top three strings on the second fret and then adding in two fingers to turn it into a, a normal E minor chord. But that means I can then immediately take those two fingers away, slide the bar up by one, and I'm on a C minor. Very quick. If you do it with the full fingered version, you can see there's a lot more work involved to get into that, changing between those two chords. So you may find you don't have enough time. This is an adventurous song, and that change is really quick. The other way of doing it would be to use your bar on the 7th fret. That actually is quite quick. If you know what you're doing, keep the pressure on the strings, keep the bar in place, but not all the way down and then squeeze again when you get back to the right place. Release the pressure, but keep touching the strings, slide it up. Your ukulele may or may not have dots on the 7th fret and the 5th fret. Some have dots on the 3rd fret, mine doesn't. In fact, mine doesn't have any dots on the side, which is very annoying. I, nearly, I try and tip X them on every now and again, but they keep rubbing off. 
but use the dots if you need to find where your reference point is. So the chords for this song, E minor, C minor, and B flat. Let's have a look at the, um, the chord sequence. I am going to uh, yeah, let's follow along with the music. So <clears throat> on your sheet, you should see at the bottom there's a summary, lots of chords written on the page in a block. That's probably the easiest way to look at the sequence, but I'm going to show it for now on the screen using the music, using the score. So uh, there are essentially um, three parts to this piece. This is part number one. We're going to do E minor three times and then a C minor, then an E minor, then a C minor, and then two more E minors. So it's going to go E minor, E minor, E minor, C minor, E minor, C minor, E minor. Do two strums or one strum at the end. Let's do that again. This is the first part. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay. You should see that on the music down below. That's the first two bars of the music. The next two bars of the music sound like this. A whole bar of E minor. E minor, E minor, E minor. Two beats of C minor. Two beats of E minor. That's part one of our piece. So I'm going to play that in Muse Score. Let's see if this works. Uh, in fact, yeah, let's do it with the audio on. Here we go. There's your C minor. It's hard to play along with. So this is an experiment using this uh, system. That's our first part. I've done that at a nice slow tempo. That's about 80 beats per minute. The actual song we're aiming for is 105 beats per minute. So I've written in the music there to strum it in the rhythm of the melody. Um, that's one option, or you could just strum on the beat, keep it nice and simple. In bar three there, it looks, uh, it's very tempting to go to that C minor early. You've got a whole bar of E minor before you drop down. So let's make sure I'm not missing anything in the chat. B flat minus six, says the flutes. Um, okay, next part of our song. Let's move along. Enter here. So let's start from there again. We're doing a whole bar of E minor first. Then we're going to move for the first time to our B flat minor six. That's another whole bar there. And then a whole bar of C minor. And then back to our E minor for a whole bar. So it's just a bar of E minor, bar of B flat minor, bar of C minor, and bar of E minor again. You should see that on the screen underneath. Yes, that's more or less working. So let's play along with it. Here we go. Two, three, four. B flat minor. C minor. B minor. Okay, that more or less works. That's part two of our song. Part three is very similar to part two. But when we start it, we're doing a C major chord. So remember our C major up here? Uh, this is, we're already playing an E minor. So all we need to do is shift that bar over or shift your fingers over just to the string nearest the floor. We're gonna do two strums of a C major. Then back to our E minor. And then down to our B flat minor for a whole bar. Then to our C minor for a whole bar. And then to our E minor, ooh, I've written the wrong chord. And to our E minor for one strum, 
Back to C minor, back to the E minor. Looks to me like on the chord sheet, I've missed out that last C minor in that bar, but on the music, it makes sense. So let's go from here. This is with the music. Two, three, four, C major, E minor. Okay, I'm not sure I played along with the, the music there, but hopefully that made sense. So part one is always changing between E minor and C minor. It's based around E minor, but there's a couple of sneaky C minors in there. Let's do that again. Part one. E minor, E minor, E minor, C minor, E minor, C minor, E minor, C minor. E minor. C and E minor sound very similar when you say them, so that probably wasn't much help, but hopefully my finger positions helped a little bit. Once more with me, this is the trickiest part to remember probably. Don't go to that C minor too early on bar three. Two, three, four, E minor. C minor, E minor, C minor, E minor. Whole bar of E minor. Two, three, four, C minor. Good. Part one. Part two. Stay on the E minor for a whole bar. B flat minor for a uh, whole bar. C minor for a whole bar. E minor for a whole bar. Part three. Very similar, but starts with the C major. C minor at the end there. If you want to mark that onto your chord sheet, if your copy is also wrong, which it may be, uh, it's the second chord in that final bar should be a C minor. The rest are all E minors. Okay, let's play all the way through that chord sequence. Ooh, starting from here, get in the right place. Okay, one, two, three, four. E minor, E minor, E minor, C minor, E minor, E minor, C minor. E minor, E minor, E minor, E minor, C minor, E minor. Stay on the E minor. C minor. E minor. Quick C major. Good. Hopefully that was in synchronization and you could play along with the music there. If the music doesn't make any sense to you, then it's about time you learn to read music. I would say focus on the chords above the music. They are in the correct position, so they give you a chance to know when to play the chords. If it's still not making sense to you, do download the chord chart, which has just got the chords marked in the bars as to where to strum them. That looks like... Uh, this. Get it in the right place. Zoom out slightly. So this bit here at the bottom is the chord chart that I'm talking about. And that chord right at the end is not quite right. Uh, so make that one into a C minor. Uh, so uh, you should have prepped this before, Tim. Okay, let's switch back to the chord chart so you can see them. There we go. All right, let's have a uh, look at the intro. The reason I skipped that out first is because the intro, I think, is the hardest part of this song. It's really quite fast. So back to the beginning on the score. We can fit all of this in one view. There we go. So we're going to use our only our E minor and our C minor. I would strongly suggest playing these ones down here. But you can do it up here. It just means a lot of jumping around. And what I wouldn't do is try and play the E minor with uh, individual fingers. I'd really strongly recommend doing a bar with that first finger so you can get to the C minor bar 
nice and quick. So, this is how it sounds at full tempo. Two, three, four. fast there's some really quick strumming going on let's stir it down a bit and work out what's going on even slower just do it a couple of times doing it with the high E minor, it sounds like this. Okay, really slowly just once through and then we'll talk about what I'm doing. Three, four. Played the first one wrong then. When you're going slowly, it's easy to get these strokes the wrong way around. But if you're going to do it fast, you've got to be quite disciplined with this. So the, the strumming pattern I'm using is this. Down, 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 up, down, up, down, down, up, down, up, down. Which keeps my hand moving in a consistent fashion. But it's not straightforward. I'm using triplets, which means I'm dividing a beat, in this case, actually half a beat, into three equal three equal uh, bits. So normally our beats get divided into two. One, two, three, four, one and two and three and four and a one E and a two E and a three E and a four E. We're normally dividing into two each time. With triplets, we divide it into three to an odd number. So we get this one triplet, two triplet, three triplet, four triplet. Or in this case, we're dividing the quavers, the half beats, into triplets. So it's gonna go one, Two triple at one and triple at triple at one, two triple at three and triple at triple at. So if you want to learn this rhythm, I would suggest saying that one, two triple at three and triple at triple at one, two triple at three and triple at triple at. It's not that easy. We'll do that once more. One. Two triple at three and triple at triple at one, two triple at three and triple at triple at. You can see if I divide the entire bar into those um, semi quaver triplets, we've got this triple at 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 triple at. And I'm using alternate strumming for that down, up, down, up, down, up, which means that the second half of the beat is played backwards, it's an up, down, up, rather than our normal down, up, down. So it takes a bit of practice. So have a go at that, just to say an E minor chord, you're gonna do down, up, down, up, down, up, in the space of one beat. So keep it nice and slow, three, four, down, up, 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 down, Keep your right hand fingers nice and loose. You're stroking the strings. Allow your fingers to bend as you play, but you give them a little flick as you go. Don't hold it too stiff. It'll hurt your fingers and it'll sound bad and you won't be able to play fast. Keep them nice and relaxed. We've got to get that up to. And that's not easy. So I'll show, you, I'll show you a simpler version in a minute. Once you've got that triplet strumming going, that. Then we can just miss some beats out. So I'm going to do a down, 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 up, down, up. So I get this right. One, two, three, four. There's a whole beat on the first one. Then doing a whole half beat. And then we're doing a down, up, down, up, which is backwards from our normal second half. Then a down. And then two sets of triplets. Down, up, down, up, down, up. So if I say it with our little saying, one, two, triplet. One, two, let's slow it down, Tim. Three, four, one, two, one, two, triple at three, and triple at triple at one. It's 
deceptively fast. Even slower. Three, four, one, two, triple it, three, and triple it, triple it, one, two, triple it, three, and triple it, triple it. You could conceivably change the middle part of that to it up, down, up, down, if you wanted to keep it in consistent pattern with the others. But give that a go. I'm going to work out the speed again. Three, four, one. Bit faster. One, two, three, four. One, two, triple three, and triple Full tempo. I know I'm going fast, don't worry. Keep up when you can. One, two, three, four. One, two, triple three. Okay, if you kept up with that, well done. It's not easy. It's adventurous. You signed up for adventurous ukuleles? However, we can simplify it by just playing on the beat, if you really have to. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. You could do one, two, Just divide it into four groups for each beat rather than six but we lose some of the frantic madness and scariness of the song that is really quite menacing so if you can go for those triplets be adventurous see if you get on if that's a step too far for you just stick to strumming on the beat one uh, e minor first one two three four one two three four okay so the whole chord sequence from the top this is going to be at 80 beats per minute, so it's still quite slow. Let's get the tempo. Dun, dun, da -da -dun, dun, da -da -da. Here we go. One, two, three, four. Dun. <laughs> Missed the space part. Three, four. Ding, 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 So when we're playing the, the melody section, where the melody is on top of us, we can strum the chords in the same rhythm as the melody if we want. Or we can um, the main bit where that affects it is in part two and three. For there, I would suggest using alternate strumming for those quick ones, particularly on that B flat and the C minor and the C minor. Or to simplify it, which is what my wife's going to do later on, and it works almost just as well, just strum one chord per beat. keeps it nice steady tempo so that is our chord section how are we doing on time not too bad we've had 30 minutes so let's have a look at the melody section Doo -doo -doo. if you're playing the melody then you can do the intro just as normal so let's start from the beginning of the tune oh i realized that the audio for that was coming out all the time i meant to turn that off sorry so uh, I'm going to go this, through this fairly quickly, just pointing out some of the fingering issues you might encounter. The first part, the first line of this, uh, is uh, one, two, three, the first four bars. 
um, is really not that bad. But going start on an open E, then a quick open C, and then a very quick third fret on the E, and then back to our open E. So that first bar. And again. So the only fret we need there is fret three on the E string. Once again. Try and dampen those open strings after you've played them so they don't ring out. I don't really want to hear them together, I want to hear one at a time. Uh, then the next part is going up to the A string, 2nd fret, 3 of those, and then we're going to do a little C minor arpeggio going all down on the 3rd fret. So this is all 3rd fret on the A string, then the E string, then the C string. So find out what fingers work best for you. I'm using, making sure I'm using different fingers for each string. I would suggest third, second, first, but you could do second, first, second, whatever works for you. Then we do our little sequence that we did before. So that whole first line is. Okay, let's play that with the music. One, two, Three, four. Okay, hopefully more or less in synchronization there. That's part number one. Hopefully that wasn't too bad. Keep your notes nice and tidy. Try not to overlap them and keep them uh, short and snappy. Those rhythms there are dotted rhythms. They're not triplets. They're not a swung rhythm. It's it's ba 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 ba, ba rather than ba ya da da ya da. It's not a swing, relaxed rhythm. It's quite a snappy kind of thing. The part number two, we're going to get all the way up to fret number seven, same place where we were for our chord, and we're going to alternate with the high A string down to the E string. First, it's nice and easy. We're just going seven and then zero on the E string. Then we're going to move in a chromatic fashion, one fret at a time. So I'm never jumping my more than one fret at a time in that movement. So seven, zero, seven, six, five, four, three, four. If I'm playing it quickly, I might use my little finger for the 7th fret, because then I can got more fingers available for those other frets. So if you play that 6th fret with the little finger, then you can use one finger per fret for that for the last bit. Then we need to jump down to fret 1, essentially doing our B flat minor chord, playing the two strings nearest the floor from that chord. Then we're doing another chromatic thing, starting with one open fret, op open string on the A, going to fret four, fret three, fret two, back up to fret three. Sounds like this. So from that B flat minor chord. So the whole bar, so the whole section so far. Then we're back to our little pattern that we use, uh, it's similar to the pattern we used in part one. So we're walking up an E minor chord there. It's slightly different from the part we used in part one, so watch out there. That whole second part. Play that right. Second part again.
Okay, let's play that with the music. Two, three, four. I'm going to turn that music off so you can't hear it. It's probably annoying you far more than it's annoying me because I can't hear it very well. Need to work on this format. Let's do that once more. You'll be pleased to hear that the uh, third part is almost identical to this part, so we don't have to do it all again. Two, three, four. And I've just gone and moved it off the screen. <laughs> that didn't help. So let's go to part three, which is here. Now we're on the screen again. Almost identical to the part we just played, but the ending is much more familiar to us because it's the same as we used in the first part. Part three is like this. Again, watch out for those open strings ringing on. You need to dampen them slightly with your left hand so they don't overlap with each other. The very quick notes, the semi-quavers, I'm actually using a pull-off here. Just there. So I don't have to move my right hand too quickly. I'm just plucking the fourth fret and then pulling my finger away because my fingers, my first finger is already down on the third fret. And then re-picking it on the fourth fret again. Uh, that makes it a little bit easier to play quickly. Same again here. So let's do that last section. Two, three, four. Hopefully that was more or less in sync. Okay, I realized that that was a very, very quick run through of the melody, but this is one of those pieces where there's only so much I can teach you. You've got the music, you've got the tab. Um, if you haven't, go and get it. Um, and uh, you just need to learn that. It's not gonna come straight away, but it's actually not as bad as you think. There's only two parts really to learn. Part two and part three are very, very similar to each other. They're not particularly easy, but if you think of them as chromatic movements on part two and three, you're only moving one fret at a time most of the time. Then you're jumping to a B flat chord. And then on the first part, it's all just repeated phrases with a little C minor chord at the end. Let's play through that melody at a nice slow speed. Start from here. In fact, we'll go from the beginning of the song uh, so we get a nice run up to the melody. Two, three, four, bum, dum, da 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 Okay, so if you manage to keep up with that, well done. Joe and Jenny, you are probably playing this like experts because you played this, I think, in 2015. Well done. Time's running away with us. So um, we need to put those bits together. So I'm going to get my wife up here in a minute. Um, do pause the video and have a practice if you want to or play along with us and then go back and practice and then try along again. Uh, I will eventually put the link to that video I played at the start in the description. I haven't got it there yet because I haven't uploaded it properly. Um, it's all done a bit last minute. So you can watch that there. It's on my other YouTube channel, my Nico Fur, my band channel. If you search for N-I-K-K-O-F-I-R on YouTube, 
you should find uh, some of our videos and our music and I will put that recording on to that channel the link will be in the description later on today so um, we just played through there at 80 beats per minute let's do one playthrough at 105 and see if we can manage to do it. I'm going to put both of the parts on. Uh, I Yeah, let's put the melody part on. It's also got the chords written above it. Right, let's just do the melody part. Okay. I'm going to turn the volume up on my headphones so I can hear it. Dun, dun, da -da -dun, dun, da -da 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 -dun. It's really quite quick. Let's see if I can keep up with it. Uh, okay. From the beginning. One, two, three, four. For some reason, when you do the Dal Capo, it doesn't do the repeats. Okay, that was a bit of an experiment with some new technology there. Um, let me know how you think that went. Uh, I can probably improve it myself as well. Uh, okay, I'm going to bring Sophia up and we're going to try and play through the whole thing to rec recreate what you're going to do in your home. So let's have a go at this. Don't go anywhere. Okay, here we are, folks. I am just going to turn off the close-up camera. There we are. Let's close the door. Do you want? This one? That's fine. It's not in the tower, it's Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> okay, those of you who are still with us, thank you so much for sticking around. Uh, yep, yeah, nearly done my full 45 minutes. I've got one minute left. So this is a complicated one to try and do in 45 minutes. Uh, so well done for sticking with us. Um, if you like these videos and you want to see more of them, then you can support me uh, to make them. No one's paying me to make them. Well, some of you are actually paying me to make them, but I'm not funded by any organization or anything. This is just an independent thing. And the videos are free to access. The chords are free to download. But if you want me to keep making them, then please do consider supporting me. There's a link in the description for Patreon if you use that or PayPal uh, on my website if you'd rather just do that. Um, just a little bit every month will enable me to keep making them. Those of you who are already doing that, thank you so much. Sophia says thank you too. Thank you. I'm pretty sure. Thank you. Because it's helping us put food on the table. Um, it's so kind of you. And I really enjoy making them. I hope you enjoy watching them too. Um, right. Mm -hmm. Let's have a go at this. Yeah. Sophia is going to do the ukulele two part, which is the chords. Um, so this. Bum, bum, bum. So let's move out of the way slightly Thank so you can you. see her. We've got a full screen there. Uh, and we're going to play this. Let's play it marginally slower than 105. Let's do 95. And bring that back onto the screen. I'm going to put the tab for the melody on the screen. But it's also got the chords um, uh, written above there as well. So do, do download the full score if you'd rather follow along with a different one. Uh, so, uh, are we ready? Yeah. So you're listening to what's coming out sort of through there. Okay. But mainly you're listening to me, okay? Cool. I'll follow, <laughs> follow you. So the tempo is, let's get it sorted. Here we go. I know we're running over time. One, two. Uh, oh, how can I do this? Can you press space after one? Yep. <laughs> this was well planned. One, two, three. Four. Ah, get it in the right place. We'll get there. 
<laughs> okay, one, two, three, four. first time it's gone wrong live on TV <laughs> okay I'm gonna do it without the um, chords playing in the background so do find your music and let's work on it together ready one two three four backing track is much better without a backing track so live and unedited from the sparks house household guys thank you so much for staying with us um uh it's been fun uh, that was a little bit of an unusual ukulele one i'm always on the lookout for unusual ukulele songs to be a bit more adventurous with we're gonna have a quick lightsaber moment because that was fun go and play with your star wars toys boys and girls see you next time on adventurous let's get my halo around my wife Adventurous <laughs> ukuleles. That didn't work at all. Stop talking, Tim. Bye now. <laughs> oh, and I can't find the stop button. <laughs>